Whether you own the Singer Elite SE017, you're looking to purchase this machine, or you're realizing that your serger looks very similar to this, I'm going to give you the simplest way to understand and thread your serger. So first off, we're gonna talk about quality of thread. I'm gonna show you that your little quick start guide is correctly going to guide you. And if you do the same thing I do is when you're getting started, I always recommend that you put on color coded thread. So put a blue one in the blue um, line and then the yellow one over here. Now you can see where every thread is actually going in the overlock stitch. Now people always ask, do I have to use four spools of thread? Well, there are two needles and there are two loopers and we're gonna explain and see each of them shortly. The other thing is, is quality serger thread. This can make the difference when you sit down to serge and if you have quality thread, the serger is gonna work so much better. Now, before I go on, I'm gonna tell you a quick little note. I pulled this out of the box and I stepped on the foot control and it was actually really, really tight and it ran very, very, um, Oh, we'll just say not smooth. It was a little on the loud side. I thought, oh my goodness, is that how this serger is? And I actually had our technicians quick do a um, oiling on the inside of it, and it is a totally different serger. So if your serger doesn't sound like this one does, I am gonna have to say that it's probably sat for a while, and you might want to have the store you bought it from actually just give it a quick little lubrication. Um, that can happen when sergers are in a box for a year or two, and then they're finally sold to you and then you get it home and then it, it's just been sitting. So just note that I just experienced that. That can happen and it is sounding so much prettier um, now that we took care of that. Also, the thread that comes with the machine, it's okay thread, um, but it is going to not last very long, tell you the truth. So I'm gonna just have us cut the threads, remove it. If you wanna use it for a little bit as you're just getting started, that's fine too but you're gonna realize you're gonna run out very quickly. So definitely change it up. The other thing is, is what threads do you need when you get started that aren't color coded? So people say, oh, I have to buy four spools of green and four spools of blue. And here's my trick for you. Number one, you can get four spools of white, four spools of like a, a neutral color, gray or ecru, your pick, and then four darks. And so you don't even have to do four blacks, but that's what most people do. But you could switch those up, a black, a navy, a charcoal, and like a chocolate brown. And then you'd have all four of the darks and they're gonna look like dark colors when you surge. But truly, after you snip these threads, just go ahead and open the door. I am gonna pull out the tweezers right here because we're gonna use those right away. They are the extensions of my fingers. So if there's any other threads in here, lift up the presser foot and just clear the whole serger out. So like I said, we're going to place the colors in position. Now, I'm noticing there is actually these little cones already on the spindles back here, but they're very low. So if you kind of, kind of lift them so they'll go a little higher, I'm gonna actually turn them over, there we go, yes, I'm gonna turn them over. Then that way when I put my spool on here, see how it doesn't wanna rock around anymore? So I'm gonna just take that, flip out over all my spool holders, and then they'll be ready to go. So yellow one on the end, we'll call this pink here. And by the way, if your dials are turned to different numbers or at zero, like mine were, I'm gonna start by putting them all the way back to three. There we go, that's where we're gonna start. Now, when you start threading a serger, it is important that you do it in this order and your quick start guide is written correctly. Number one is the purple or the pink one. We're gonna thread this one first, the yellow one second, and then there'll be needles over here on the side. So I always say we kind of thread from the inside out. So where this little part comes up at the top, pull that all the way up and we're gonna thread from here to here and then here to here. That's the correct order. Trust me, it makes a difference. And when we come back around to actually surging, what you're gonna also find is if any threads break, they need to be reconstructed in that original order to get them to all connect once again. So keep the order in mind always. 
Start by taking your thread and coming from the back side towards you. So the thread is always going through the guides, never kind of linking back over the top of them. We're gonna click it in to this guide in the back. And one thing else that you're gonna find with the guides is that if you ever miss one, you can always go back and kind of slip it in if it has escaped or you didn't get it in there all the way. The next thing you need to do, and I'm gonna point this out, is I need you to hold the thread up here and pull this thread deep into these tension discs. And that way it really gets in to where it needs to be. So it should have a little resistance on it. This one doesn't have much, but that's just because of the way it is. But if you just lay it in here, you are not getting it deep enough. So make sure that you are properly pr pressing that thread down like threading with purpose. Okay, let's zoom in here and I wanna show you the rest of the steps. Here is another guide for number one, the order you need to thread the serger and which guides they actually need to go in. So as you can see, each guide has that little kind of purple or pinkish color. So you're coming underneath this one. I'm gonna hook it into there comes right up to that one. And at this point, you can see that it goes through the upper looper. Now, if you want a little bit more room, let me show you, you can actually push on this knife, see how that's spring loaded and twist it up. That is gonna kind of give you a little bit more room down here. You could even lower the presser foot down if you want, and that will give you a little bit more access to the eye of the upper looper. If you can't see it, you can actually turn the hand wheel until it is a little bit more exposed. And at this point, I'll just take the thread, clip it with my scissors at a, a slight angle, and I'm gonna use these tweezers to kind of give it a little point, and then I'm gonna just point it through that hole. And at this point, you can just pull it off to the side over the top of the foot. You can go ahead if you want to kind of wiggle it underneath into the back. Sometimes that's a little awkward, but you can put it back there. As long as everything has caught in only the guides it's supposed to catch in, then you know you have threaded that one correctly. By the way, these loopers are very large eyes because when we do decorative threads, that's where it goes and there's plenty of room in there. When I move this knife up, by the way, it's, I mean, it's sharp, but it's not like you're gonna cut yourself, but just be aware of it. And once we're done, we'll be going and bringing it all the way back down and it will click into place. So you're pushing and spinning. Oh, I got push with all, there we go. And that will bring it back up. Okay, number two is our lower looper. That's gonna be our yellow thread next. The top is gonna to be pretty much the same. Over the top, click it in the guide on the back side of the machine, pull straight down with some purpose. There's one guide at the base of the housing to slip it underneath. And again, now we're following the little picture. Now this one has a few additional guides. We're following the yellow openings. And again, this could be easiest if you are following along with the quick start guide that it was included with the machine. There is one more yellow guide right here. So I'm just bringing my thread up until it clicks into it. Now here's my trick for getting the thread to go all the way into the back of this lower looper. I'm gonna take a hold of the thread and kind of hold it up and with some pressure. At this point, I'm going to push it behind the lower looper. So it's just sitting here, kind of see how I can drag it. And I want you to drag it all the way into the back until it kind of drops into the little groove. Otherwise, if you don't do it this way, it doesn't want to go all the way, it's hard to get it in there. So by just letting it fall into place, it's so much easier. Now see this little groove right here at the lower looper and then to the eye where we're gonna thread? The thread, when you have it correctly positioned back there, the thread is naturally gonna be placed in that groove. So if you're unsure if you've got it, that is one place that you can quickly look and then see if that is going to be laying there. So here's our test. I'm pulling the thread all the way through. See how it lays right in this area? That means the lower looper is threaded correctly. At this point, you can just, again, bring the thread over the top of the foot, or you can push it out to the back. Either way works. Since we're done threading the two loopers, we can go ahead, so we don't forget, is to push the knife back into place and let it click to where it needs to sit. 
Whew, that was the hardest part of the serger. Now it just gets easier from here. If you want, you can go ahead and let the door close. And I'm gonna just kind of thread both the needles at once. We're gonna bring them over the top here. These are where you're gonna notice that the tensions are very tight, so make sure you get the thread all the way down in. Um, it doesn't matter if you thread the left one or the right one first. I tend to do the right one, then the left one. So I'm coming across over the top, and this one is gonna be at the guide at the top of the needle over here on the right, and then this one is gonna be the left needle. Give it a good little pull, maybe even a little floss. They both share this part here in the blue notch, and then again, ready for the guide at the top of the needle. Now I'm gonna show you the handheld needle threader that I highly recommend for any serger owner. We have links below to this handheld needle threader if you're interested in purchasing it. Otherwise, I would just go ahead, cut a nice clean cut, take your tweezers, line it up so the points and the thread are all kind of sticking towards the needle and you can go ahead and thread it this way. But if you are having trouble, this little guy is my lifesaver. Here's how it works. First off, you do notice that there is a marking with an arrow on top, okay? So that needs to be placed so you can see it. Just FYI, there's another one 180 degrees on the opposite side. So as long as one of those arrows is up, you are good to go. Then this little needle threader has kind of like a little tongue that's gonna come out. And that's what's gonna glide down the needle and then kind of push its way into the eye. Now to put the thread in there correctly, you need to actually set the thread side to side. So think of it like putting the thread in like a horse's bridle. So it goes in his mouth, so left to right. Then come over to the needle, gently push in until you feel the little tongue kind of match up to the groove of the needle. And then as you slide all the way down, push in. When you pull it out, that little loop will be sitting behind the needle that you can take the small hook and pull it through. Let's try that again. We need the blue thread for the left needle. Put the thread in the needle threader, place it on the needle, slide all the way down, plunge it into the eye, and when you see the loop come out the back, you can get a hold of it and pull it through. Isn't that so much easier than trying to line up and get everything in those eyes? Now, I did see that my thread at the top kind of came out of the guide, so I'm gonna just swoop that around so it's in place. And now, with four equal threads ready to surge, I'm gonna show you my trick for getting started that works 100% of the time. You'll always be seeing me sew on two layers of fabric. And when I fold the fabric in half, if you serge off the fold side, after we're done, we can check and make sure that we have a perfect looking seam. If you sew here, well, now we, it's just hard to open. Okay, here's my little trick. Right now, there's not the continuous kind of chain you're used to seeing on the sergers. So if you lift up your presser foot, slide the fold of the fabric, kind of tuck it underneath. Now notice I'm just moving it underneath the foot, kind of about halfway down my fabric. I'm gonna lower the presser foot on it. And I like to do this in my serger class because the first stitch the serger takes, the needles are going into the fabric first versus like almost stitching in air. Now you don't have to do this, but it is one way to kind of always make sure that things are looking good. If you have threaded it correctly, you'll be able to stitch all the way down. And now if, if you've got lots of like individual threads here, which I do, I can just kind of snip those. They'll go all the way off, but eventually you can just step on your foot control Keep surging off the edge, gently keep pulling. And this little chain, if you bring it under the foot, the knife will cut it off. So I'm gonna do that again. We are looking at most of everything looking correctly. I see one thing that's a little out of place. My thread did not get all the way far down into my needle tension that I needed. And I will show you that in just a second, but I wanna just get my threads all going together. Even if they're not perfectly, um, you might say, 
aligned. As long as the chain is working, that means you have threaded it correctly. We can adjust for everything else. So here's what you're looking for. I first see two rows of stitching. Those are my needle threads. So I've got a blue and kind of a lime green here stitching on the front. My upper looper has the pink in it going back and forth on the top. And then my yellow is the lower looper going back and forth on the bottom. Now you're also gonna see just like a little tiny tick mark where the needles are back here. And that is better than what I had originally. So see those larger ones? So I had missed one little guide in the serger, which is so funny because when you think of threading a serger and you think, gosh, who put all these crazy guides in here? And then you miss one and you're like, oh, that was my problem. So apparently the engineers think that there should be guides and we have to put thread in them. Okay, so that's one thing to always go back, double check that you haven't missed anything. Now that we, when we pull this open, we see that we have a nice seam here. And if you ever need to match thread to your fabric, you can always, whatever's on the outside needle, which here is our blue one, that's the one you can actually match to your, your fabric. You don't have to have four matching spools, but if your outside needle matches your fabric, then you're guaranteed that when you open it up, that's the color you'll see. And that's why we're seeing blue. If I really pull hard, you'll see a little blue thread showing through there. But all in all, this is what a, a four thread overlock stitch or a four thread construction stitch is supposed to look like and how easy it is to set up. I hope you'll check out all of our serger videos on our Stinger Elite SE017, or if you have a similar serger, you will be able to follow along mostly throughout all these videos because all sergers are pretty much the same.